And that was the wireframe uh, part of it. Um, a wireframe, as you recall, is simply a diagram which shows sort of the major sections of the page. And there can be more or less detail on it. So for example, I might say that I want a banner with the company logo, a search bar, navigation, main content, news stories, and you can do this to more or less detail depending on your particular project. That would be an example of a wireframe. It's showing main sections of the page. Um, now, you will not necessarily have one wireframe per page. One wireframe can actually count for multiple pages. In fact, that's typical that a wireframe will be for more than one page because one of our goals is to have a consistent design and have a consistent layout of the page. All right? Um, so you're not going to have a bunch of them. You might have a few. Again, I mentioned last time that maybe your home page has a different layout than the rest of your pages. Or maybe you have a photo gallery pages that have a different layout than <coughs> you their type of page that has a distinct layout, OK? And we haven't yet talked about what people tend to do images and so on. We've had the strategy and the scope section. which involved goals and requirements. We then had the structure and the skeleton. Sometimes the wireframes are called skeletons. These two things, the first two, relate to the content the second two re relate to the organization of the material on the site. So our emphasis in web design, this is sort of flipping the typical view of this. The emphasis in web design is on defining what the content's going to be and defining how it's going to be organized. Because truly, that's what makes for a good website. Good content that is well organized. When we talked about good and we bad websites, that's typically the kind of stuff that we said. We brought up some pages where there was a million different things on it, where there might be good content somewhere in there, but it wasn't organized very effectively, and that made it very difficult to find. So good content that is well organized is a big part of web design. It's about the actual appearance and actual presentation. And the nice thing is, is what we know about CSS, we can change those things without worrying about these things. So our last phase is the surface phase, and that involves the creation of a prototype. What is a prototype? Pardon me? Something you can change. That's absolutely true. And when you think of a prototype, you're not thinking of a final version. You're not thinking of something carved in stone. You're thinking of something that you can change. In fact, not only can you change it, you're probably going to change it. All right? What else is true about a prototype? Rough, rough concept. It would be like an English English paper being like a rough draft. A prototype is not meant to be finished. A prototype shouldn't be perfect. If a prototype is perfect, then you probably spent too much time on it. Because you build a prototype to be changed. 
It's something that you put up so that you can discuss the final form of the website in a very tangible way. We've gone through these other phases and we decided what content we're going to have and how it's going to be organized. This is sort of the final presentation of the material. So we're looking at it in a final form or rather a proposed final form. And users then can look at it and make comments. You make a prototype to be shared between everyone involved in the project. So everyone's on the same page and everyone can give their feedback towards it so that you can change it to get to the final goal. All right. Because of that, you don't want it to be finished. Why go through all the effort to finish it and make a perfect prototype if you know you're going to go back and change it anyhow? All right. So in a way, that's sort of an art that is too unfinished. Otherwise, it's not going to be meaningful. It's not going to show anything. You know, if you create an HTML page that just had this, it's not going to really tell the user what the prototype's going to look like. On the other hand, if you spent hours and hours and hours making what you thought was a perfectly well done, completed website, and the customer says they can't stand it, define sort of that sweet spot where you spent enough time that you can document what your ideas are, but not so much time that if you have to throw it all away and start over, it's a tragedy. It's a, waste of it's a waste of time to make it too perfect because it's a rough draft. One nice thing with different CSS files, and I swear every semester I'm going to make this a requirement of the project, and I probably will next semester if I remember. But one nice thing is with different CSS, you can propose different prototypes. Pretty easy. What we're going to do starting next time is we're going to take a topic and develop some prototypes for it. And the nice thing is, is we'll be able to not develop just one prototype, but once we developed one prototype, simply by changing out the CSS file, we'll be able to show a second, a third, a fourth prototype. So our user can easily look and say, yeah, I like this one better than that one. Or I like this one, uh, the navigation part of it, but I like the header and footer on this one. All right, where you could go and change things around a little bit. And combine. and combine, mix and match, exactly. So because of that, you don't want to spend necessarily too much time on any of them to make it, to make it in your mind, perfect. Uh, but on the other hand, you want to spend enough time so that the user can get a good idea of what you want. Uh, all the things that we do in the other phases of the project, while they're certainly necessary, really the prototype is where the user actually looks at what you're finished, most polished form of your ideas are and decide if it works or not. So this becomes a very, very, very important stage of the project. Questions about the prototype? All right, we'll pick up on there next time. All right, and we'll start actually taking a wireframe and building a prototype from it. I have a question sure. for you, uh, but not related to prototype. Okay. But. Go ahead. Will we be learning how to do banners and other things that you put on that first sheet? Because what do you mean by a banner? Uh, like the tab going across where you've got the search. Well, we'll learn, we'll learn part of it. Some of the stuff, like the search bar, for example, will take server-side scripting. So we won't talk about that. But we'll certainly talk about how to make a heading. We've already talked about how to make headings, right? Uh, the biggest thing that we're going to talk about when we talk about designing a prototype is how to use CSS to make it look the way we want to. Because really, all, all, when I say banner, all I really mean is the header section of your page that contains H1s, H2s, maybe an image, maybe some links, or whatever. And really, the, the ingredient I think that we're missing is you might want to style them differently than we have been styling them. Okay. All right. We'll see you in lab.